Okay. Okay. Welcome everybody to April's work session. And uh, we will start off with um, principals. Do we have um, board have any questions for any of the principals and attendants um, in regards to their packet that we submitted? I have a general question about uh, maintenance concerns that the principals may have. Uh, are there any principals here that have any maintenance issues in their building that uh, needs addressed? I knew that, uh, I believe that it was from uh, Mason Town that there were some questions about maintenance issues, but uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember specifically about any others. Were there? Well, I have a question. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, yeah, I... Yeah, Mr. Dillon. Uh, the portico out front, um, you know, uh, I, we did get a guy from uh, Point Mary that he was supposed to have submitted a, um, an estimate. I, I don't know. I, I think Mr. Chisholm has been in contact with one another, so... Uh, that, that's, that's been an ongoing issue for s okay. several years. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, now's the time. To, in order to take care of it this year, before we get back to file, we need to have that look back. I know. I believe. So we take care of it. I believe he, uh, Mr. Cheslow, he's not here. He's off today with the flu. But um, I believe, as Mr. Dillow said, he had been in contact with the gentleman about doing some work. Yeah, and I, was that painting, Zach, or, what, or was that putting the metal underneath? I think that's putting metal. He was thinking about um, scraping the paint off because it's the um, Anthony George is making a safe coat. Um, he does asbestos removal and also uh, lead paint removal. He said it, it looks as if it would be cheaper to uh, encapsulate everything with uh, metal. So that's about and, it. And that's fine. I don't really care how they address the issue, but this has been at least a year that we've talked about it and the problem was there for a period of time before that. Yeah. And here we are, uh, we're, in, we're in April, there should be, as Mrs. Sweeney said, there should be a, a plan, a maintenance plan for summer projects presented to the board and not, not wait until June or July and we hear the story, well, it's too late to get it done. Okay. Yeah, Thank I you. believe this can't go past May. We, we have to have a decision made. And I'm going to look now, since we're talking about a little bit of maintenance, the seal coating. I know we're not probably going to be able to do anything about it this month again, but by next month, we need to have something that we need to vote on, where it needs done, and who can do it. I, I, I want to say there was something in the packet about seal coating. They gave us the like specifications, which is so important. <coughs> I can have a bit more. Mr. Chesler come Wednesday night. Um, like I said, he's was yeah. off today, and I know he's uh, texting me that he has the flu. So, but I can have him come Wednesday night to answer questions on, on the seal coating act that he has. Uh, well, if, if everyone's all right with that, because I think we really need to do it on this by May. We need to know who we're, what, what, what lots we're doing, and so we can get it done. Well, so it needs to be done for graduation, so it's nice. No, it won't be done for graduation. Uh, they won't start doing that until after graduation. Yeah. Especially on my high school. I just talk around the high school, it's not that bad. I mean, I want him to tell us where, what he's done first, what school needs to be addressed. Well, they have it down here. Uh, Did I miss it? I'm going to North Meadow and Plot. Okay, right, we right need here. to put it out. Okay, I'm missing. And we need, I'm to, we need to make sure that the gym floor doesn't get lost. Oh, right the beginning. Also. Yes, yes, that so needs to be taken care of. That's another point. Oh. I, I can touch base with that with Mr. Hutchinson and Dwayne. Um, Mason Town, is it, is it with the clocks? Yes. The clocks? Yeah. I know that um, Mr. Cheslow and Mrs. Hot have been talking and the gentleman from Simplex has been contacted, um, I believe, almost weekly to try to schedule him to come update the clocks and correct what needs corrected. <coughs> My understanding, the 
problem with Simplex. I guess they were supposed to do um, something with the fire alarm systems. They did not get the work, and they did not want to come out for just a plot for like 750 bucks, whatever somebody else was going to be doing the fire alarm work. And so it has been, um, from my communication with Bill and Lisa, that's been the hold up on the plots. And I did talk with Bill and Lisa Friday in regards to possibly if we can't get those clocks fixed to replace them with battery operated clocks so they had clocks at the school that function. So but Bill can elaborate on that and Mrs. Hot. I know Mrs. Hot will be here Wednesday night with students she's presenting. She is not in attendance this evening, but um, if Bill's here Wednesday you can ask him if, if he heard back from some collections last week and if they're going to be coming to fix those clocks. But, this, but as far as the gym floor, uh, Mr. Hutchinson, Mr. DuPont, Mr. Cheslow, myself, did go down and um, looked at the gym floor. If you recall last year, the gym floor, whenever they took it all the way down with the bare wood, redid the graphics, the one coat finish they put on it, there was <coughs> discoloration, it was yellow, we weren't happy with the finished product, we did speak with the gentleman, is it SNS, Dwayne? Yeah, yes. And he said that he could either redo the entire floor, take it down to the sand, and redo all the graphics, redo the finish, or he would um, come back and recoat the floor for the next four years free of charge. And the reason we went and looked at it last week is a lot of the yellow in that finish has blended, it's disappeared, and you can't see where the yellow was on the, on the main part of the gym floor map. Now over by the sound system and the bleachers, when the bleachers were pulled out, you wouldn't see it, but it's close to the wall. It's still pretty yellow in that area, and we felt that it might be better at this time for the board, uh, the district, to uh, have them come in and do four years of free recoding uh, they would they would top sand it, take the dirt and stuff that was out, and just recoat it, and that would be done free of charge by that company for the next four years versus taking it all the way back down to the bare wood again. And then next year we'd have we'd be having to repay to have it um, top coated every year. So that was an option, and I believe Mr. Chesler did call and spoke to the representative from that company, and he said that that would that would be fine. Uh, but Mr. Chesler said he would like to be present with Mr. DuPont whenever they are actually doing the floor to make sure that the application process is being done correctly. So that's, did I cover it all guys? I think you're looking at, you're looking at a two day span compared to a two week span. If you go down, if you redo the whole thing, I think it's approximately uh, 10 days, uh, two weeks, 10 to 14 days. Uh, on the other one, uh, to take the dirt out and seal it is about two days, three days. I so we should go that way. So, um, so we we could add to the agenda for Wednesday to move forward with having the SNS company come in and top sand it and recoat it um, for the next four years, versus having to take it all the way down. To to the bare wood starting the whole process. Are you, are you the original company who did it? I mean, I'm only, I mean, I'm maybe a little naive here, but why wouldn't we make them make it right for us? But it should have been. That's what we're doing. Remember, we didn't pay, we didn't pay them for the job they did because it was the finish was botched. If they take that down, will that yellow come out? Well, most, most of the yellow, the yellow well, you got to look pretty hard. I mean, you got to look. I didn't. I never noticed. It. You got to look pretty good now. I noticed it. I mean, initially, uh, it, and I thought it was pretty bad. Uh, as I go in there now, uh, you have to really, really look, especially uh, when no one's on it, uh, to, to to notice. Uh, it's probably very hard to see to the naked eye. If you're not looking for it. But when they sand this down, if we do go for that four-year plan, that will disappear? No. No, it won't. No. It won't. No. Okay. They'll take the coat off and then recoat it. Okay. Uh, the other red that we discussed was if they would take it all the way down 
what are you going to get this time? Uh, it, it is kind of, you know, uh, right now it does look okay, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so, so to get to four years, if they're going to recode it. Uh, What's the annual cost of the recoding? I want to say it was approximately like four thousand. I think it was four thousand yeah. over. Yeah, between four and five thousand, I believe. I don't. Know. Yeah, yeah. And over the four-year period, I think when we initially the first uh, okay. yeah, when we initially did the whole floor, uh, sanded it all the down, uh, restriped it, repainted. Uh, I think it come to about twenty four to twenty-five thousand dollars. But we didn't pay for that, right? So Cor correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So. So wait a second. So if we. No. If we if we go to the option that we don't that they're going to recode it for the four years, do we then have to pay them for the original job that they did? I don't believe. I, I mean, whenever we talked to the gentleman last year, uh, we didn't pay it at all because the because it wasn't satisfactory um, to our expectations. I mean, there was a lot of yellow on the floor. And they're going to eat that on top of coming back for the next four years. From from my understanding, or with our discussions with him. Last year, after the floor was completed, that was the understanding. Then, excuse me for a second. I think we're misunderstanding a little bit. We initially got that floor done, and we paid that money up front, the twenty-five thousand okay. dollars, two years ago. Last year, they came in and they resealed it, top sealed it. That's when the discoloration came, and that's when they used. And that's when product. we had correct. The first year they did it, it was beautiful. Yeah. There were no yellow marks in it. They come back the second year, recode it. Use a different product coating the floor. That's when we noticed the yellow. That's why it was thought on their end of was it something we cleaned it with? What happened? We went with all their recommendations. Therefore, then we didn't pay for the, the coating. Yes. Okay. yes. So we didn't pay them approximately four thousand. Correct. Dollars. Correct. Yes. But there was also the gentleman I believe refused to sign a performance bond. <coughs> that that was that was for the redo. Yes, that was for the redoing of the whole thing. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Again, uh, yeah. I this believe is, so. I, this is quote a correct. freebie, but we're getting this guy to do it that refused to sign, to sign. Yeah. a performance I, bond correct. initially. I believe so. I like to have that variety. Now, when do we do this? Uh, we were looking at as soon as after graduation. Okay. Okay. Now, Plus, remember, we had a, remember, right. we got that Colorado group come in correct. in two weeks. I think you should go after that because they're going to be using our gym and staying there for two full weeks Correct. doing that youth work and that religious group coming right. in from Colorado. I think we should yeah. wait. Yeah. Be honest yeah. about it. I agree. Dwayne, if we can. When, we when does that start? You know, by Jesus. Just load up or the main office knows, but they'll be here for two weeks. I think the first two weeks in June. That's what I agree. And they'll actually be here one week prior to set up and get ready for that. So, so you're saying three, three weeks? weeks. Yeah, it's three. Because we're providing the, for them to shower, eat breakfast, and sleep here, right? Yes. And they're going to go out and come back and eat. <coughs> so on Wednesday, they're going to go somewhere else because we have 150 people in the district that's going to be serviced by these Jews because I've talked to that group. That's correct. So it's going to help a lot of elderly and poor. Right. Okay, just a little tidbit. That's good to know. <laughs> you got people wanting to use the gym for back yeah, yeah. Mr. Peck, I have one more question on the this report for uh -huh. the um, On the back page, um, uh, four bullets down, uh, there was a, a, a pump that had burst and they lost light off. Is that in the recently repaired? Yes, that's what we had. Um, the high school was. We had some rooms that were cold, and what was that, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago on a Monday. Where we had some of the classrooms were 70 degrees, some were 71, some were 65, some were, we had a few that were low 60s, and maybe four or five that were probably in the upper 50s. And that was due to um, there being a loss of some glycol, maintenance, Mr. Cheslow, and I think all four maintenance guys um, were able to find and correct the problem and it was fixed like part of the next day. So this wasn't from the building where we recently had that repair? Down in South. Down in South? No. Okay. This, was at, this was at the high school. <coughs> it, it, was it, 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 didn't, it didn't read on here where it was located. 
Paul, I'm not sure how many gallons that they put in the high school after it. it, 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 it. I'm not sure how many gallons they had to put in or what they did to correct it. I know that they all, um, the whole maintenance crew were there correcting it and found a, I guess, problem and corrected it. But I don't know how much black ball they had to put in. Any other questions for any of the building principals? Okay. Um, Mr. DuPont, anything else with athletics? Uh, well, well, here's a couple of uh, <coughs> hires we're looking to do on the uh, agenda. And uh, just getting through spring sports right now, the weather is a lot better than it was last year. Uh, a whole lot better. So <coughs> I had a couple, uh, cancel a couple of games. That's all I have. Any time. questions for Mr. DuPont? Dwayne, refresh my memory, please. Okay. Um, volunteer coaches. Yes. We're, that's pretty standard now? Yes. Yes. And, and everybody that's on the list has been, they've turned all their uh, information in and have been uh, structured. Can you describe briefly the, the uh, vetting process? I mean, it, is this, um, are these positions opened up to everybody within the district? And then, can you just explain that process to me so I understand it? Uh, yes, we, we post the uh, head coaching positions throughout the district. Uh, we feel that we need to post them into the newspapers, and we do so. Uh, the assistant coaching positions normally are not posted uh, unless we absolutely need them posted, then we post them. So all of the head coaching uh, positions that, that are for hire this week, that would have been posted district-wide? Yes. Okay. So what happens then if you have multiple people that come forward and are interested in one of those coaching positions? Well, then we'll have to do it. Okay. For, for the head coach? Yes. Is that what you were referring to? Yeah. So, so the, I mean, there's a couple of head coaching positions, and I just was curious in terms of, uh, you know, are there more people that have applied than what's on our list? No. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. DuPont? Thank you, Dwayne. Uh, maintenance, Mr. Cheslow, as I said, is not here tonight, and I can have him come Wednesday night to uh, answer any questions. Okay. Um, hey, hey uh, Chris, one, one quick thing. Get back to Wayne for we are coming. Uh -huh. The uh, the turf out here. Did we ever get the machine or something that we were supposed to get? Yes, we got a, uh, a brand new sweeping machine. Approximately, I think it's like eighty five hundred dollars. Yes, we did. Get that. Have we used it at all yet? No. I had a company come back in, and they were down there doing some work, and they're going to come back in once the weather gets drier. And we have a lot of, uh, I guess, maybe in late May, June, when it's not raining out as much, they're going to come back in, and they're going to level everything off, do a complete sweep of the field. Okay. We suggested that we not do anything until they come back in. Right, you. Mr. Banks, it's um, Mr. Dunn went back to uh, I have one, another question. Okay, sure. Yeah. How did the PSSAs go? Did you see any issues or um, anything that could be better for next time around? Anybody have any input? I was going to say, today was our first day of testing, and I, everything seemed to be okay in my building. You know, we try to put the kids in the best testing environment for them. And you know, just encourage them to be at school daily on time and do their best. No problem. Is there any reason why we have to have them this week? Um, the, the state dictates okay. the testing window, okay. and um, you know, in their wisdom, uh, they plan the testing window this year in the middle of Easter. Yeah. Um, and um, as attending the meetings in the intermediate unit, it brought to my attention through some other districts that they had the opportunity to change the window. Mm -hmm. um, but that didn't extend to everyone. It was sort of, if you hear about it, do it. And then after the fact, no more people were allowed to change their window. Although um, I did try to attempt to change the window, but according to the building principal, they listened their opinion. And they said, just stick with the window. Everybody wants it to be the way that it was in the book, or, you know, in the game, so ready to go. So we did not change our window, so we will be doing English this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, Thursday, they do some makeups. We will come back from Easter. Um, we will have basically a week of just get it back together. 
will do some preparation. Then the following week, the last week of April, they will do two days for math and then two days for science. And apparently this year, as long as the majority of the tests are sent back by May 3rd, we will have results by May 31st, which I'm anxious to see if that happens. If it does, that would be great, because that helps us with planning. Then for next year with groups and, and, and figuring out where kids need to be and, and, and how their needs to be met. But I'm not saying that, I'm not sure that that's gonna really happen. Um, another question for the principals. Are you having enough staff to meet the accommodations for the students? I know you have to move things around, and is, is that been a challenge? It's always a challenge. Every year is a challenge. It's a chess match. You know, we just make it work. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're used to it. We know what we're looking for. When are the Keystone tests in May? Yes. How many people have opted out of those Keystone tests? Do you know offhand? I can probably count on one hand. Really? Not Six, that many? Five. Four, five. Well, I got a letter the other day. Because when they opt out, that does hurt the school district. Correct. I got two questions. I was going to ask. If someone opt, opts out, that child score, is it a zero? zero. Yeah, it's not counting. Okay. So that hurts our district? I thought there was a difference between if they just refuse to take it and if they opt it out. It was explained to me by an administrator once that if you opt out your child for philosophical or religious purposes, there's a, there's a marked difference between refusing to take it and opting them out, and it was better for the school if they were opted out rather than just refusing. So I was explained to me. Right. Well, it's, it has to be done before because of religious reasons or, or those that there's a box to check again. Yeah. But my understanding is, is that but it, it doesn't count. It doesn't. It just the yeah. kid's not tested. Right. Whereas, whereas just a refusal without going through the opt out process is what the school. Yes. Yes. As the population. Yeah. So, so I don't want there to be a misconception that if you go through the proper steps to opt out your child, that it hurts the school. Because my understanding is that's not true. I opt out my kids. You have to. Uh, you have to come and review it. Uh, the two week window prior to uh, <coughs> review it and state why of the religious reasons. My second question is Is it going to be two weeks later next year, the testing? I read somewhere that it's not going to be. I, I, don't, I don't know. It comes out as Mr. B's exit from the state uh, on their end of the testing window, which is a two week window. Okay. okay. Yeah. It'll still be around the same time next year, I guess. Uh, it usually is at the same time. This year we're up in the it's a little different because we're getting out May 31st, which we, uh, we're not accustomed to. If opting out, is there a form that has to be filled yeah. out for the state? There's a procedure that we've yep. established with the district, and when they come to monitor, they will. Um, and the parent, the child just can't come to school. No, yeah. no, no, no. It has to be done by yes. that. Yep, there's a, there's a process that the parent has to come in. What does the child do during the school day? We provide alternative, worthy, enriching academic activity. <laughs> For all well students said. that opt out. Mr. Hutchinson, while you're on the hot seat, let's let's go back to the uh, football field uh -huh. and graduation. Uh -huh. uh, what are your plans for graduation as it relates to the football field? And is the football field suitable at this present time? It, for it, it is. The repairs that they're looking to do, uh, the sand underneath has to be up. A dryer uh, for the repairs and things that they're going to do yeah. to level it out. But as of right now, uh, my plans are uh, to hold graduation outside uh, again. Uh, but it will be uh, football field should be ready. I mean, okay. there should be no qualms about that. Okay. What date do we have now? What's the date? It's Friday the 31st. Say it again. Friday the 31st of May is graduation as of today. Mr. Hutchinson, just a quick question. If, if, if we have a lot of rain for Friday, would a backup plan be Saturday? Just uh, last time you and I haven't really talked about a backup plan. Right, yet. but uh, last time when, when we discussed it was uh, stick with the date. If, if it is rain, uh, go to the gym. Uh, I, I think rather than change it and, and try to put it together on a Saturday, uh, last time I spoke to the board, uh, you know, we thought we would go on that day regardless, uh, but I'm, 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 I'm open for suggestions. If you want to have a backup day, you can go to Saturday, uh, if you can, or if we can stick to Friday and uh, put it in the gym like it was uh, in the past. I think, I don't know how many years we've been outside. Two. 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 Last year was excellent. 
I don't know who you have connections with, but you know, it was just really excellent. Uh, I know you have nothing to do with the parking areas uh, as they've been uh, run over and dug up and, and things with the sewage. Do you I'm, anticipate that being a problem? I'm concerned. Uh, I did speak to Mr. Cheslow uh, last week, and he had the guy come back out and fill the, the, where the road is torn up. Uh, I feel pretty confident. I know last year we didn't park in that backfield uh, because of the grass end, so that kind of was <coughs> a challenge. Uh, we filled up the lawn as much as possible, and then we're in radio communication to where to direct the other traffic. Uh, this year, depending on the weather, uh, we'll be able to use that on uh, the backside by the field, hopefully for, for additional parking that we didn't use uh, because of the fresh uh, planted grass last year. That should help alleviate some of the parking. Whatever we can shovel them in. We, uh, we did provide five, four shovels uh, last year that, that we bring them back and forth. Uh, you know, on the other end, we're, we're providing six graduation tickets. Uh, Talk to other districts, local, and afar, that, that's a lot of tickets uh, for one individual. That is a ton. Some districts that I've reached out to provide two. Uh, you know, we're in a process now that we provide you with four. If you would like to request two more additional tickets, once those four tickets have cycled through to everyone, then you uh, request through a letter uh, to the office that you would like an additional two tickets. Uh, I would say the majority of them take those. Two additional tickets so to be offering a uh, student six members of your family to attend a graduation uh, I feel that's pretty uh, you know pretty beneficial on our part as a district to the student obviously the graduating senior. you know while, while we're talking about parking I, I'm gonna bring up about the con um, it's not the students, like, they sometimes they get there late for the Grand Forge, okay? Mm -hmm. They're parking clear over here, and they're having to walk all that way. And yeah. I don't know if there's any way we could remedy that. I mean, it's not my problem. It, it's not, you know, well, it's their problem. It, it, no matter so, how long, how many times you tell them don't come till 3, I mean, it's like the Kenny Chesney concert. They're, they're there at noon. Uh, you, you know, the parents and everybody. Uh, well, yeah, what I'm saying is, is there any way we could give the students first when we talked this year about having maybe a drop off in the band line uh, to have them come in there, uh, we do have two new advisors that have taken over from the past advisor who uh, left. So, so we are talking about the parking, and, and I agree with you. Uh, some of them are trucked a long way. Here sometimes in their dresses. I agree. I agree. I agree. I'll look at it. I do know we discussed it uh, about a parking plan for, for the, the students. Uh, so I will look into that. And then I think last year it was raining and someone wouldn't let them in to even go into the front part of the gym. I, mean, I don't think that's appropriate either. If okay. it's raining, they should, they should be let in. <laughs> and that's for the Grand March, correct? Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. I think we should have the makeup day and, and try to keep it outside. I, I'm in. I mean, whatever you all decide, yeah. we'll make it work. You know, I actually lean the other way. I think there are people coming from out of town sometimes, and sometimes these kids have parents that don't live around here, and I know that's an exception. But I mean, I, I think Mr. Hutchinson had a good point when he said, you know what, keep it that day for planning purposes. So that's, that's my personal view. That a lot of people have to juggle a lot of things to make sure six people are available in a particular day. I just think if it's rain, if you're going to have everything set up in that gym, that means you have to. I, I, I hope to make that call like I've done the last two years. <laughs> Uh, and, and I'll, we cook it I'll live or die years. with it and go from there and put it on my shoulders. Uh, but, but, you know, if, if I feel there, you know, with some uh, conversation with Mr. Pegg and, and Mrs. Bezak and everyone, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, remember the first year uh, we put it together that Friday, uh, or I think that Thursday night. Uh, the so air, the, the air conditioning went out or something. Yes. Yeah. But you did a good job last year because that's the most I've ever seen anybody at a graduation. Thank you. That was full. Everybody enjoyed himself. Right. It didn't look like there was any problems at all. Yeah, it went over pretty smooth. And hopefully, uh, we've hopefully had beautiful weather. Office. We've had beautiful sunsets. Right. Right. People did come out. Yeah. I think Mr. Howard has, has a point of, about extending it possibly to Saturday. And again, because graduation is on Friday. Right. I understand what, what Mrs. Krupley is saying because it is difficult to juggle 
but it's on a Friday night and you're you're just looking at a weekend, which you know work schedules for most people would not be adversely affected. Uh, I just think it's a lot easier from the administration standpoint to know that you know they can plan for it to be outside and, and you don't have to split your resources into the gym versus mm -hmm. the outside too. But uh, as I said, I'll just do it as well as last year. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try my best. Well, I agree too because if you go on a Saturday, they still have a travel day back somewhere on Sunday. As long as we can hit our Friday and Saturday, I think we're okay. What do you do if it rains both Friday and Saturday? We go Friday and Saturday and inside. inside. Because they're traveling, they have to get back to work and things. It won't be as hot Saturday morning either. We did it Tuesday. Well, that would be the next question if we do uh, put it before I put the tickets and uh, start printing. Uh, if you all want to decide to make a decision, uh, and then we'll go with the time. Uh, if, if we don't go on a Friday evening at 6 when the doors open, uh, then we can make an arrangement uh, to go Saturday. If you want to go Saturday afternoon, evening, uh, that can be discussed as well. Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. See, uh, Troy, food service. Uh, thank you, Mr. Craig. Um, other than what's in my board packet, I really have nothing to discuss. Uh, I am moving forward with the summer feeding program. Hopefully, the application will be done tomorrow. It's more tedious than I thought. And a lot of training going on with that. Uh, we are up for uh, review with the CEP, uh, Community and Eligibility Provision. We have those numbers pulled. Uh, as of 1st of April, and I'll be submitting those to PE in May uh, for approval. Um, just moving along, I believe it's May. You guys have any, any questions for Mr. Bowler? <coughs> Thank you, Troy. Technology, Mr. Bowler. Hello, everyone. Um, kind of in the same uh, mode as Troy. Don't have a whole lot outside of what's Encompassed in my board report, just uh, getting ready for end of year stuff. Have a lot going on this summer. Uh, plan for graduation preparation, scheduling preparation with the kids. Um, that's it. Unless anyone has any questions for me. Yeah, you you have something for executive session, Mr. Bolton, correct? Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, this is Brigitte, special ed. Yes. Um, good evening, everybody. We're finished with pass the testing, which is the alternative for our high school students. All of them have been returned to the state and all of the videos have been uploaded and I apologize for my board report being late but as I said to a few of you, that's the reason why it was a little more cumbersome than I thought. So I want to thank Diane Black, Jerry Plisco, and Sherry Dunn for the help that they gave you this week and the support in getting that job done. But it is finished. Um, we are in IEP season very deeply. It just seems like there's a lot of IEPs that are coming due in April and beginning of May. So it's a pretty busy runaround for both Sherry and myself. We're all over the place. So if you ever need us and we're not in the office, if we're in one of the schools, you can probably track us down through one of the secretaries if you ever need to speak to us. We have an LDA meeting tomorrow at the IFU. Sherry and I are both attending. And um, there's a meeting coming up with PAC in the beginning of May. It has to do with ex expulsions and suspensions of special education students. I'm going to be talking to Mr. Pay about the possibility of uh, myself, maybe one of the principals attending that meeting. Um, that's, that's about it right now. We're getting ready for ESY. Our paperwork is <coughs> with the state at the end of the month, and we'll collect here from teachers as for those that are eligible. And um, if you have any questions for me, that's really all I have. Any questions for Mrs. Brickage? You know, just to let you know, both Mr. Clisco and Mr. Fitch and Mr. Miller, we are going to look carefully at the numbers um, and look at the staff. Um, and, and Mr. Pay and Mrs. Dunham and I did have a discussion about that today too, and we're you know trying to figure out where everything's going to lie at the beginning of the school year. We have a massive testing list right now; it's very difficult to predict who's going to qualify and who's not. But um, we're working on it. Any other questions for Mrs. Brickage? If Mrs. Dunham is not here, uh, she may be in attendance Wednesday nights, and she isn't here this evening. Um, Elementary federal curriculum testing, Mrs. Bezak? Um, yes, like the others, um, it's 
story of everything is in the board report. There are a few items I wanted to highlight, one of which is we had a nice um, event, um, federal coordinators of Bay County had planned the event, it was held at Lakeside for our parents representing our school district. We had a nice table with myself and Mr. Peg attended. We had representatives from all the elementary schools. Uh, they were um, introducing information about coding and the computer usage in schools. Um, they found that to be beneficial, so it was a nice time to share some ideas. They got to meet together to share ideas of what's happening among the schools themselves. So again, that was, that was a nice event. Um, also, um, the team that we, we built um, in the district is we organized a pseudo group of people, the STEM team. We are meeting to talk about where we are in our technological advances as far as instruction go and what we're using in the classroom, not so much the hardware um, or, the, or the networking, but more or less what's happening particularly with regard to bringing in the STEM concepts into all the classrooms. We have a good deal going on for our elementary schools. We have um, managed to have, um, and, and kudos to Mr. Berkshire, who just sent me an email that he was accepted to be trained um, free of charge this summer um, AIU with um, encoding. So he will be introducing um, the coding program at the high school level. We are working to figure out how we can merge what's happening at the elementary and what's happening at the high school and make it happen at the middle school. Um, so again, not only will the STEM team involved with some input from the constituents from the teachers from both middle schools need to meet with us also and tell us about the responses of the middle school schedule, how or what maybe it could be modified so that we can fit these types of courses and open doors up for a little more opportunity for middle school. Um, it, it's tending to be a very assessment-based schedule and kids don't have a lot of opportunity to, to take other classes just to the nature of, due to the nature of the schedule. So we are going to jump in and exploring some of those options and how we can be created at the middle school so that from the elementary to the high school we have that event in the middle. Um, so I mentioned Mr. Berkshire. I'd also like to take a second to mention, um, she just sent me an email on Friday, so it isn't necessarily in the packet, but um, uh, Noel Petron, who is our technological person um, stationed at Mason Town, and um, I take it back, she's in Plava, and Mason Town. She is the, um, she teaches the computer program and the coding. She got accepted, she had applied for a grant, got accepted through Rolls-Royce Corporation. So she will be going to Arizona for a week, and she has everything paid for, um, nothing. Um, and she will be working with um, specialists from Carnegie Mellon, MIT, Harvard, and she will hopefully get to bring back um, a lot more innovative things that, you know, that we're doing, the building problems we're doing. Um, and it's nice because then we can look at some of the Title IV money, which hopefully it doesn't get um, cut through the federal budget, but that's the money that, that I can use federally to fund some of those initiatives because it's specific for um, uh, innovations in education. So it's a little bit of money, but it's, it's there. So that's a good thing. So like I said, we have these things going on. This project will we'll address the project lead the way that's going to be in our elementary starting now. So that connects, again, the high school with the elementary, but again, um, and we do have a middle school teacher going for that certification. I'm sure he's going to elaborate on that. But again, it's trying to make that, that progression um, to work all through our schools. And again, we have some good things coming. It's very nice to see the parents who they were listening and turn around and say, well, we do that already. We do that already. And we do. So it's kind of nice to hear that. Um, so again, I just wanted to take a second and congratulate Mr. Bershaw and um, Ms. Petron. You know, on their initiative to, to look for these programs and to get themselves and approved and accepted into them. So that's good for our district. Um, other than that, that's it. Any questions for Mrs. Bezak? Yes, Mrs. Bezak. Has there been any update on oh, with the students going into kindergarten? I think we have talked about that before. Um, well, we're, we um, are having a um, transition meeting in May. I don't know the date right now, caught me on board. There is a, is a um, county transition meeting that's going to take place. It's um, through the United Way. And so t our team will go, and other districts will also go. Hopefully, that will be one of the topics to discuss again. We're looking for a day. And um, um, I, I just got an invite, and I don't know a lot about, about attending the Governor's Institute with regard to transition. So hopefully, I'll be able to go to that um, and see. 
where we are, where we stand. But again, we are going to offer this summer to two high needs schools, and I guess I should be saying this to you all now in case you do get a call. We only had a small, limited amount of money from a grant from the United Way. So we are high needs schools. So we will be offering that kinder camp that will be offered for three days. It will be promoted during kindergarten registration, and we are encouraging the parents to come. And if, if they all can come, that's fine. But we are able to get transportation, able to get a nurse to be there. Um, Mr. Goldman is able to, hopefully everything gets approved, they'll get lunch and a snack. And again, it's a nine to two day where they will get to spend three days of help with that transition again. If it works, then we'll look at where we can get money, we'll be creative, and we'll try to do it with all five elementaries. But again, the key is to go to our target areas that are um, economically disadvantaged in any of those two schools. So we are going to have that. And again, we will see if, if we did that longer, or if, if we did it in like, you know, a sickly thing so more kids could get involved, is that going to impact our school scores? So, or just their performance by the beginning of the school year when they start getting baseline evaluated. So we're thinking in terms of that. We have some strategies, but again, it's, it's, it's all new. I mean, this is just something new, a new strategy that we're looking to get to get the kids where they need to be mid year kindergarten. Thank you. Any other questions for Mrs. Feedback? I just would like to say something. I really appreciate all your hard work with all the programs you, you initiate and all the fall that we would already do. I mean, that says a lot for the school district. Now, we have know. very good elementary. Yes. We have very good principals. Yes. Um, I specifically more or less work with the elementaries that I am, in my capacity, very blessed to have, you know, very good principals to follow through and really good teachers that have buy into it, um, into these programs. Well, your effort is for So hopefully that continues and, and we can go. I think the key is the follow through. Don't do a bunch of things. Take a couple things and just zero in on them and then get that out of the way and then we'll go on Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bezak. Um, secondary, um, high school principal, secondary curriculum, Mr. Hutchinson. Uh, you have in, in the packet uh, the uh, high school course additions uh, that I ask that when we are when you're looking them over, uh, with stipulations if the teachers are available uh, and there are a number of kids that are interested in taking it that hopefully we can make those courses work. Uh, adding to that, I would uh, ask for your approval. Uh, I just got notified on Friday that Mrs. Wolf, uh, one of our social studies teachers, applied for uh, college and high school uh, psychology and was accepted. Uh, so with your approval, if you would add that to the course uh, that you have, she will, uh, she will be certified through Pitt uh, for students who would like to take college and high school psychology course, which will end up being a three credit PIT course. Uh, however, the only hiccup we have uh, are the books that are re required for the class, which are roughly about 140 a book. Uh, I would like to look to purchase a class set. Uh, I just started looking at it today. Uh, they give you about four different uh, books that you can select, uh, however they're roughly all about that same price. Uh, so that would add another college and high school class, uh, uh, college and high school class to Albert Gallatin High School. And I think that's it. I would like to mention or give you a brief, uh, just an outline, uh, myself, Mr. Pridovich, uh, and Mrs. Dunham, and Mr. Pig uh, attended that ATSI training which uh, the high school got targeted for uh, its learning support population. Uh, this is a timeline. Uh, we, the ATSI stands for Additional Target Support and Improvement. So currently we are working with the IU, uh, along with Mr. Dave Dunham, with the IU to um, develop an improvement plan for our learning support students. Uh, we did get dinged on English, math, and attendance. Uh, this is just a timeline for you all to look at. Uh, there's another part uh, that if you were grouped in a CSI that you get funding. Uh, we, 
luckily we're not in that group. So the timeline what I will be presenting to you hopefully uh, probably in May, and it has to be on review for 28 days. Uh, and I need board president's signature, and then all of you uh, can review it, and uh, we'll put that plan in place starting July 1st or, or this year. Uh, it's going back on two years of rolling data, so we're using the data from uh, 16, 17. And then the following year, for next year, we'll put a plan in place. Uh, we're dealing with attendance, how to raise our math scores and our English scores. So when you hear the ATSI, uh, I just wanted you to have an idea or a guideline of the plan and the implementation process uh, of where what will be coming. And I think that's, that's it. If there's any the questions. The board has to formally adopt the plan, correct? Yes, the board does. That's, that's what you're scheduling for May. Co correct, it'll be May. Yeah, it has to be on, uh, it has to be ready to go, Mr. Price, by July 1st. Uh, it does not have to be submitted to PDE at this time. Things could change. But as of right now, uh, you all need to uh, approve it, and then uh, we'll put the plan in place. Mr. Hutchins, yes. back on the new course proposal, uh -huh. when will you have an idea of what courses interest the students, that, or which ones will be forced? Uh, as, as they're starting to go, I have the uh, guidance counselors going into the classrooms now just talking about the new courses. Uh, other than the CHS that I just got notified on uh, Friday. But I hope to get some numbers. Uh, and then make some uh, decisions. However, some of those teachers that uh, are interested in some of those courses have other core classes or are teaching six classes. So if that teacher is, depending on the numbers, I know the freshman class coming up is about uh, 50 more uh, students than this current freshman class. So what I'll look at is if that teacher is teaching a sophomore class, they may have period open where one of those electives would fit in. Uh, so uh, hopefully by uh, the next couple of weeks I'll have a better idea. When will you begin scheduling? Uh, we started just uh, getting the counselors in there. Uh, we're looking at the Sapphire piece because the Sapphire piece, the student can log on to the Chromebook uh, with the teacher's recommendations, schedule, and then submit it, and then we'll start getting the numbers. So uh, myself and Mr. Bullen have talked with the guidance counselors. Uh, after that, Sapphire will come back in and go over it again with the counselors. Uh, so I'd like to get it done hopefully in the next week. So then by the May meeting, we should know something more definite about the classes? I would hope so. Yeah, I would hope so. I would hope to say, here's what I have to offer. Here, here's the listing of classes that we made. Uh, but I also I'm going to tell the teachers that, you know, if it didn't work out this year, uh, you know, obviously I'll keep this list and hopefully present it uh, for next year if something opens up. Would be a class enrollment minimum. Ten, I'm looking for 10, I'm looking for 10, 12 to, 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 you know, and these are semester courses, so that means I got to garner 10 or 12 for the following semester. That, that's what I'd like to keep that. Yes, that's what, what I'm looking for. Are these like are classes in general? Are they more academic? Are there some general classes for the students that aren't so much interested, like they go to attend CTI? Are there other general classes for them? Yes. Yes. Yep. Not so academically heavy. Correct. Correct. That we currently have? Absolutely. Yes. A lot of your kids that go to the CTI school, they, they, they don't... They don't have the opportunity they, they, to take any of their elective yeah. is right. the CTI. Right. 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 And so other than the gym, Mrs. Moser, the gym and the health, which they need as, as a state requirement. Do they just take that once, once like, they get a CTI, but do they take that as a senior, then health and phys ed? Or just one time. We usually we have them taking it the freshman year to get it out of the way. Okay. So then when their CTI come back, when they come back from the CTI, they that opens them up their sophomore, junior, and senior year if they would like an elective. But for the most part, their four core classes take up the four classes at the high school. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Hutchins? Okay. Thank you. I was wondering if we could look into including an economics course. With this. I can. Uh, we, we at the time when I did it, I solicited or asked the teachers, "Hey, is there something you would be interested in teaching?" But if not this year, obviously I can look in the economics end of it. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to that. And also to piggyback on Mrs. Bezek, uh, we are moving forward with the project lead away, which uh, each uh, elementary received thirty thousand uh, for the five elementary schools that we wrote a grant for, and both middle schools. I'm sorry, the elementary received 20,000 and the both middle schools received 30,000. 
Uh, so that's a two-year grant with Project Lead the Way in Chevron, uh, which will bring in uh, more hands-on things in the science classes. I do have two teachers, one elementary teacher who is going to get trained. She can come back and train the other teachers. Uh, and I have one middle school teacher who's joined this summer, uh, paid for it through the grant to receive the training to come back. Uh, so my thought would be the eighth grade students at South, this teacher flip-flops, the eighth grade students at North will get the same thing, and those elementaries will be pushing in third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, so that's something to add to, as Mrs. Bezek said, the uh, STEAM part that we're trying to promote here. Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. Yep. <clears throat> As a side note, you know, the high school musical I thought was a very big hit. Yeah, um, excellent. I think most of you attended that. It was uh, excellent. The performances were outstanding. Um, the cast, the crew, all the, you know, everybody had a hand in getting that set up uh, deserves a, you know, a round of applause. So thank you to all the kids in the high school and everybody supporting the musical. Um, transportation, Mr. Parnum. Thank you, Mr. Tag. In addition to my board report, I included a, a breakdown of the band usage for this year and the corresponding savings. And uh, that being said, that's more than the cost of one band. And I'm uh, asking the board to consider on Wednesday approving the purchase of two more vehicles. It's one of those situations where, yes, it will cost us some money, but you have to put that money out to save this kind of money, too. So, we have one of our bands, our band number three, is uh, currently 11 years old. It's got 92,000 miles on it, which isn't a lot of miles. However, it is starting to uh, experience maintenance issues. We probably put $4,000 in it last year. Any questions for Mr. Park? I have an unrelated question, and I'm, I'm just going to throw this out at you. I know I'm, I'm catching you by surprise, and probably Mr. Pegg as well. But is it worth exploring the cost savings of busing all of our children in one, one uh, bus ride? And I think the schools in Maryland, or at least part of Maryland, do that, where elementary, junior high, and high school kids all ride together. Um, and I, I think the reason behind that is a cost savings. Is that something that either you've explored before and ruled out or something that's worth exploring in the future? And if yeah, obviously it requires some adjustments in terms of uh, it, 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 I don't know, Bill, we could chime in together. We yeah. have discussed that briefly in the past, but with like, the districts that I know that do that, they have one campus and their kids are being transported, dropped off the elementary, dropped off in the middle of the high school. I think Carmichael does that. West Green um, does that. Well. Jefferson and West, West, West Green. I, I think they all do, but their campuses are located at one location. If we would have been, if we'd be fortunate enough to, to have a high school, a middle and elementary campus, we could do that. Or if we had a middle and high school campus, we could do that with, and have two tiers. And that would save fuel. It would probably eliminate a few buses for savings. But the way the demographics of our district and the layout of it, I, I, I don't think we would be able to, to do that. I mean, kids would be on the bus for you know, a very long time. But Bill, if you could chime in. No, I, I agree with you, Mr. Peg. And uh, we did look at one of the possibilities that if there was either a new uh, middle school or convert this school to a, perhaps a six, seven uh, facility. Uh, we could do it in two tiers for sure. And uh, that would save a lot of fuel. It would save a minimum of two buses, in my estimation. And uh, additionally, it would let the school start later because currently having to cover the entire district three times, we're, we're wrapping up tons of miles in that process. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you've got to cover basically every road three times right now. I don't, I don't, I know, I attended school in Maryland when I was in elementary school, and I know that, that our elementary school was not close to the junior high or the high school, so I don't know if those schools are a, the junior high and the high school would be a consolidated school, but I'll check into that. But I think that the, the I live in Princeville, so I know that that's a very, very rural area. 
but it may be, maybe even if the local people are doing it with campuses, maybe broaden horizons and take a look. I just, I, anywhere that we can save money, we need to be looking at it, so. But how recently have you have you looked into that? Uh, was that three, three weeks ago? Yeah. We had a discussion recently just looking at it, it would, it just wouldn't jive with, with you know, high school and like as Bill said the start times if we were to have the junior high campus here and a high school campus closely we would be able to start high school at eight o'clock instead of seven o'clock and elementary is maybe at nine thirty instead of nine fifteen back everything up and it would help with the study on later start times as well as saving money for the transportation but um, I just think the way our district is set up with the number of <coughs> elementary and having two middles and one high school, it would be, be next to impossible. And you do have education experts in the room, but you know, I've read studies that a later start time is beneficial to these senior high kids. I mean, they're getting up. Some of these kids are on buses at 6 a.m. And uh, that's, you know, it's hard for them. Mr. Parnum, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Parnum and I have talked a couple of times over the last uh, two weeks. My comments are not made uh, as a reflection of Mr. Parnum because he's been very, very helpful with this. There was an episode where a bus driver used some rather inappropriate language and actions with students uh, that were on his bus at the present time and the bus contractors and Bill please correct me if I'm wrong the bus contractors solution to the problem was to give the bus driver a verbal warning uh, no, sir, a written reprimand, a, a written reprimand. Uh, the language was totally totally inappropriate for elementary children to hear his actions were totally inappropriate, uh, and he got a letter in his file, which to me isn't enough to to uh, change the behavior. And I think we're paying the bus contractor, and we don't have any any say so as far as discipline for this type of inappropriate behavior. Well, without getting into too much of the detail, um, we try to make the, um, I guess, the punishment that the crime, so to speak. But we had another incident this month, which I did address in my report. That driver was suspended and actually terminated after the fact. Uh, so they are following, uh, you know, recommendations. Uh, when, after reviewing the video and seeing uh, what led to the outburst from this driver, I guess I would categorize it as a uh, frustration because of a near accident uh, vehicle pulled out. I mean, he missed it by five feet. Uh, but the language, what, what language he uses if somebody cuts him off when he's in his personal vehicle, is none of my concern. But whenever he's driving a bus with students of elementary age in it and uses the language that he uses, that's totally inappropriate and there's no excuse. It was completely out of line, sir. I agree. Any other questions for Mr. Parr? Now, talk to me how much money have we saved this year with our sports shows? Uh, actually, we've had one more trip added since this list was completed. It's now north of 37000 for just this year. That's just the school year. And we still haven't even gotten to the parade season. I didn't have that information, so I didn't, I didn't include it. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Parr. Um, security school safety, Chief Bilecki. I have nothing at this time unless the board has a question for me. 
Okay, uh, Chief, I would like to you know, touch base with you and Jason, you know, and the board, you know, just to report, you know, the bag scanners that uh, were delivered to set up at the middle schools have been working out um, extremely fine. Um, Mr. Dillo and Mr. Blisco, um, they're working great. I, I was in South myself when they uh, ran when I had an office in uh, We're running them through South in probably half the time that we were doing when we were checking the bags. Um, and, and it took the kids some time. They were getting used to it when I was there the second or third day. And I would imagine by now it's moving a little, yeah, it's moving a little faster. We're, we're getting down. You know, instead of them waiting to be told they're putting the bags on the belt and moving on through. And I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Dillo and Mr. Plisco, when we were checking bags, hand checking, we were using two metal detectors, and I believe with the bag scanner, we were just using one. Right, that's correct. And Mr. Hutchinson at the high school, there was one metal detector that we are not using. We used the two walkthroughs at the main entrance with two bag scanners and one walkthrough with one bag scanner at the student lot, correct? correct. That, would probably, that would give us three metal detectors as of right now today that we're currently not using. So the, those, as we talked briefly last month um, under safety, those three, as we thought, could be um, taken and used in the elementaries. That would leave us having to purchase two metal detectors for the elementaries. Um, but in order for someone to monitor those, um, you know, we would have to look at uh, pairing hall monitors for the elementary. We could probably, you know, look at reducing a number of hall monitors at the high school and put one of those at the elementary. Um, since we have Mr. McCormick, who we did make security as well as the truant officer, you know, at the high school. You know, so those are things that, um, you know, we need to consider for the upcoming school year. I'm not saying we have anything right now, but we do have three metal detectors available that we can put in the elementaries. That would leave us only having to purchase two, which would be uh, less than ten thousand dollars. I'm going to say probably around nine thousand for two of them, Chief. Is that? And I think we paid three thousand. So I think you're less than so, that. But I, I'm thinking though we would have to have electric. You know, oh, the, run yeah, install, then yeah. that's a cost at, at the five right. elementary because you don't have the electric right where you would need to yes. utilize those. So, those are, um, I would look probably not for um, Wednesday's agenda, but for May's agenda to look at, um, you know, putting that on in May's agenda to purchase two additional walkthroughs and consider hiring um, all monitors for the elementary. Okay, anything else under security? Any questions I, for the Chief? I, I have one, Chris. Uh, what kind of measures, or any measures, going to be done for the high school graduation safety-wise? Say if it's in the auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're not set up. Mr. Price, Mr. Price, is this something we should discuss in, in executive sessions, security measures? You can if you like. I, I, feel, I feel I think that it would be appropriate to discuss those kind of safety measures. Okay. Question I put out there. I'm not talking about personnel. No, no, no. no, but no I mean, you're under the Sunshine Law, you're now allowed to discuss security matters that, if were publicly known, could affect safety and safety strategy in our buildings. Okay. And believe me, I'm all about transparency, but in terms of safety, if we're going to talk about safety measures, I'd rather maybe the person that wants to undermine those safety measures not have access to our information. Did I do wrong and ask that question, Mr. Price? No. Okay. no. It's up to the board's discretion whether you want to do it executive or not. If you have the opportunity to do it. Right. Okay. Um, other than Mr. Cole, go ahead. Just one question. Is any of the states going to clear bags, plastic bags, or clear that help speed up the process? Book bags? Backpacks. Um, so we talked about that at the elementary. If we put the walk-through scanners in down there, that may be an option we need to do. But it are any school districts? Are you aware of doing? Oh yeah, there's yeah. several of them around. That's all. Okay. Um, good point. If we did discuss that, Mr. Colbank, that, that not having bag scanners at the elementary. Um, would use either a clear book bag or a mesh. 
and I and Mrs. Bezak and Mr. Rice decided to talk that we could make them available through the school and they could purchase them through the school. We wouldn't make money off of it, but it would be available to parents to purchase for their kids to have an Albert Gallatin clear book bag or a mesh bag so you can see what's in it. That may be a good idea anyway for those children who do not have any we, we historically have bought them. Um, we kindergarten, we started that last year, and I said to my office, we're not clear. Um, but there was no provisions for savings yeah. at that point. Yeah. And so sometimes the rate of passage is to get your child their own book bag, it's their own. So I noticed in my elementary that how many were using the clear, even if we purchased them, because it wasn't the rule at the time. That's all. Um, but okay. we can get them, they're reasonable. <clears throat> but I think if you're going to make the rule, you need to do it sooner than later. Right. So that come July, when people are planning for August, mm -hmm. they're aware of, of what they need to do. Well, we can discuss it and then yeah, do think, something uh, in May. In May's, uh, May's meeting, so parents know before the end of the year, we can tell them this is what the you know, book back policy would be for elementary centers, elementary and schools. They make a mesh book bag that you can see through as well as a clear one. Okay, uh, other, other administrative, um, in your packet, the, you know, we talked briefly last month about the TSBA policy system to uh, merge the employee sections. Right now we have three different sections for professional, non-professional, and so on. Those policies can all be merged into one policy, and it would also update all district policies at the same time. The cost for that would be $1,650. So um, I will have that on the agenda for Wednesday night to approve um, the PSBA policy system uh, merger. Also, uh, dental provider interest, we sent out a letter. We did get Fair Chance Dental Arts. Um, there are two de dentists there, Dr. Beam and Dr. Beam. It's a husband and wife team. Um, so, uh, they are happy to uh, provide that service, so I believe that will also be uh, on the agenda to approve them as our dental provider. And uh, just a reminder, I know I've mentioned a few times about the round table discussion with um, Senator Stefano and Representative Pam Snyder and Matt Dowling's offices. Um, that is the 24th, that is unlikely to change. I know the first two dates have changed due to things that come up with Senator Stefano. So I would, uh, I will have my administrative team there, and I would like to have some representation there from the board if I can have, you know, you know, two or three people. I know there's not a whole lot of room, and I, and I know we don't want to have a quorum at that, at that meeting. So if, um, if Mrs. Swaney, if you could decide. Yes, you know, I mean, I, I think there were I mean, several I people we interested. And see how you all felt. You know, just decide amongst yourself. So, but I, I would like to have two or three people, um, you know, represent there um, to listen to, to the discussion. Okay. And I have financial. Denise Sheets is not here, but we do have Andy. Is there anything under financial that you need to uh, discuss in open forum? Well, we are working on. Backfired here in Illinois State. Uh, we're also looking at next year's budget to see what we can do to, to possibly uh, cut some areas. And just as importantly, we're, we're looking at this year's budget to see where we're at <coughs> on our forecasting. So it's two important things on both budgets. This year's budget is just as important as next year's. <laughs> okay, any questions for Andy? Okay. Um, I think we'll take a brief uh, break, and we have several items for executive session. So at this time, those, uh, those will be involving personnel, collective bargaining, and security. And student confidentiality. Do you have a student confidentiality matter? Okay, thank you.